What's up guys, Handish here, and today we're gonna jump in with a quest guide for the mysterious datapad inside of Destiny 2 Black Armory. So this is actually one of the final quests inside of Black Armory, and when you complete this, you'll get a pretty cool emblem firstly, but it will also reward you with Obsidian Radiance, which is gonna upgrade some of your weapons from the forge, and you'll even get a pretty cool Ada cutscene, and I suppose in an interesting way, Ada 1 will be upgraded as well, and I'll explain that in just a moment. So I hope you guys do find this video useful. Now let's jump straight into it. So we're going to be speaking about the mysterious datapad quest step right here. Initially, to obtain this quest, you will have to open the mysterious box. So I made a video yesterday with a full breakdown of how you can get the key mold, the final key for the box, and then open it up. And of course, when you do this, you do get the rest of the mysterious box quest, the unidentified frame, which will reward you with the Izanagi's Burn and Sniper. So I will link that video down below. And on top of this, like I said, you will get the mysterious datapad quest. So it actually comes with a riddle initially. Our fates are written on the fine parchment of time, a never-ending cyclone of conflict and character. Of course, you can see the rest of that description right there, but it's a riddle that will need to be solved. Now to do this, we will have to head back to Niobe Labs in the European Dead Zone. I should also mention at this point that it will require the Izanagi's Bird and Sniper, or at least one person in the fire team with the Sniper. But when you come into the Niobe Labs room right here, if you've got the mysterious datapad quest, Underneath the central platform, there will be this lever, and you'll see that you can start the mission. This footage comes from my friend Jarvinus. He actually inputted all of the codes that we're gonna need, so I'll link his channel down below. He's got some pretty awesome content. But once you've started up this mission, we'll have to shoot a series of symbols with different weapons. So firstly, you have to shoot the missive icon right here with the bow. Then you'll need to move up and shoot the storm icon with the machine gun. Now we'll look for the pagoda with the sniper right here. Once this is done, you can look down onto the ground at the bottom left of the room. And with the bow, you can shoot to the dawn or morning icon. And now looking on the ground on the top of the platform in front of you, firstly, you'll need to shoot the star with the heavy machine gun and then the hand symbol with the heavy machine gun. And then if you follow the route right here, you can actually see underneath the platform. If you look up at the ceiling with the Tatara Gay Sniper, you'll spot this new black armory symbol. Once you shoot this one, you'll get respawning restricted and the Lost Souvenir mission will actually start. Now, you're going to have a bunch of different enemies inside of here. We can see these kinetic shields on the Taken guys. All of these kinetic shields will have to be destroyed with Izanagi's Burden. So I was actually shooting these inside of this instance. And a Honed Edge shot with the Sniper Rifle, where you've consumed all four rounds, will actually take that shield off immediately. And then you're able to kill the guys with other weapons, supers, or whatever it is. So as far as I know, it only actually requires one person with Izanagi's Burden in the team. But you basically survive the mission. There are a few different waves of enemies that come in. The high value targets can regenerate their shields if you don't do damage for a little while. And when they do that, they'll actually get a forged drone shield as opposed to a shield you need to take off with the sniper. But that shouldn't be an issue, you can clear those with normal weapons. And eventually you'll get process complete. The loot cache will spawn on the top platform. And when the loot cache opens, it will actually drop an ancient black armory frame, which is the next quest step. Now here once again, we've got some cryptic text on the quest step, but you can see Valunda, Gofanon, Izanami, and Bagusia, and you need to infuse Radiance in each of these forges. Essentially what this means is that you need to complete them with full Black Armory weapons and armor equipped. So a forge weapon in each slot, and you can use Scourge of the Past Raid weapons. And like I said, a full set of Black Armory armor. Of the armor, it will need to be forge armor and not Scourge of the Past Raid armor. However, if you're worried about acquiring all of the armor pieces, there is a new item that Ada has called a Forge Polymer. When consumed, this valuable substance allows you to obtain a piece of armor upon successfully forging a Black Armory weapon. So essentially, you can keep purchasing these, keep forging weapons, and you're gonna grind your way through that entire set relatively quickly, I would think, so that you can progress with this step. So head to each of the forges, wear a full set of armor and a full set of weapons, clear them. Each one that you clear will take it off. You can also work on any other powerful frames and things like that as you do this. I actually went and worked on a powerful bow frame. But once you've done each of the forges with this stuff equipped, you'll see the Obsidian Accelerator will be the next quest step. The Ancient Weapon frame has opened to reveal something unexpected. Take it to Ada 1 to figure out what it is. When you head back to Ada 1, there'll be a pretty cool cutscene. I won't spoil it right here, but I'll show you in just a second at the end of the video. But Ada 1 will reward you with the Obsidian Dreams emblem right here, which I think is actually a really cool emblem. There's also a triumph associated with returning the Obsidian Accelerator, but on top of this, she'll actually give you an Obsidian Radiance at this time as well, and this increases damage of your forged weapons during forge ignitions. And you can also get Obsidian Accelerators dropped inside of the Bagusia Forge, and you can turn these into Ada to get an Obsidian Radiance, but this quest essentially guarantees you one, and as you can see, I'm inspecting some of the weapons right here, so the threat level from the raid. This is actually one of the better looking weapons. You can see that it does give you a cool radiance visual effect as well. Also, Striker's Sure Hand is a pretty cool looking one. This will have some kind of visual effect on all of the weapons. 
Kindled Orchid as well is a pretty cool looking one. And personally, I was pretty happy because it looks really cool on threat level and threat level is one of my favorite weapons. I should mention that if you apply this radiance to a weapon and then restore the weapon to the base radiance, you will lose the item. But on top of the visual effect, I haven't actually tried it out, but early reports that I've seen on Reddit and stuff like that have estimated that you get a 5% damage increase on all of the forge weapons when you have this radiance inserted. And of course that is only active inside of the forges. So it's not super, super strong, but it's definitely some kind of bonus. Either way, this quest will reward you with the first one, so you can apply it to your weapon of choice. They are randomly dropped through forges after that as well. So there we go, guys. That is going to summarize the mysterious data pad, how the weapon radiances work, how you can pick up that cool emblem. And I did mention the pretty cool dialogue and cutscene as well, so I'll show you that now. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, a rating is very much appreciated down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more Destiny 2 content. I cover pretty much everything right here, and I'll keep you posted on the few final bits of Black Armory stuff over the next couple of days. Now though, spoiler alert for when Ada One receives the item from the unidentified frame at the end of the Mysterious Box quest. It's a short cutscene, but it's pretty cool. There is a lore and story element there as well. Plus it affects Ada moving forward in the game, so check this out. For now though guys, I'll catch you very soon. Is that... Thank you.